You don't have to be a millennial to be socially savvy. We believe anyone can join Generation Social Media, and your journey starts now. This is the Generation Social Media Podcast by Chatterkick. All right, let's dive in today. I have Chris, who is our customer success specialist at Chatterkick, and this is Beth Trejo, um, the CEO and founder of Chatterkick. And today we are going to talk about moderation, mm -hmm. and that's really what we use to uh, describe, and many other people use to describe how you handle your customer service and response on social media. So let's talk about that, um, Chris. Why don't you? start out by telling us some of the things that you hear from clients or businesses in terms of why it matters. Why does response matter to most businesses? I think for most of the people we work with anyways, it's, it's just that's how they connect with their customers or clients. I mean, a lot of social media is putting yourself out there, but then when you actually get some feedback, some comments back, positive or negative, I think responding to that and having that dialogue, that's really what it's all about. And when it's positive, it's great. And it's, you, know, you can just kind of keep, you know, egging them on or keep that going. But when it's negative, it's sometimes scary. It's like, how do we deal with this in, in the best way possible? And I think that's where we obviously come in and help people out with. But like you said before, I mean, it's a lot about, it's just about that relationship building and keeping that going. And it's not always the highs. It's, it's, there's some, some dips and there's, it's just how you present yourself and present yourself as a business again on that that platform, that social media. Yeah, I read something the other day, I thought it was really interesting that um, you will not be judged by your successes and your failures, but how you react to your mm. failures. You know what sure. I mean? And yeah. I think that, that just like crosses social because everybody's gonna mess up, right? Like we're gonna mess up, our clients are gonna mess up, every business is gonna mess up at some point. And so how you respond to that is seems to be the make or break in a lot of the digital world. Mm -hmm. um, I know some of our clients have um, found a way on the response and moderation to help prepare for that. Um, we have one client that we work with, actually multiple, that have kind of a bank of if this, then that, mm -hmm. right? If someone says this, then you should say um, some variation of this response. And I think that that could also be applied to if you have a marketing person handling it or an intern. I mean, one of the things we see all the time is people just hand the keys to the youngest person in the office and expect them to have the results of the most senior person in the office. Yeah. Um, you know, as we've been working with a couple of businesses, um, how do you think businesses, especially those that are just getting started in the how do we respond what's some of the things that they should look at to decide what to say to everybody? Like, do you think that there's best practices that we could take mm -hmm. out from some of those? Yeah, I think, you know, best practices or things to watch out for. I think number one is probably speed. And oh, yeah, people I agree. don't necessarily care if you don't have the answer or have the best response if it's quick. If you're like, hey, I don't know, but... I'm going to go find out. Let me get back to you. Just that quick response, it kind of puts them at ease a little bit, you know, gets them off off that intensity or that aggression if it is negative. Um, but I think probably the next best thing is just how would you, you know, talk to your mom or your grandma? And it's like, how would you want them to be taken care of? Again, if it's a positive thing, great. That's usually easier. But if it's a problem that somebody's having, again, it's how would you want to be taken care of or your family to be taken care of? And if you go with it, with that mindset, you're probably 95% of the way there. Yeah, I agree. And I think one thing that um, we do a lot, but it's easy for businesses to replicate is use people's first names. Isn't oh, there yeah. a little quote that <laughs> yeah. says like the thing people love the most is the sound of their na own yep. name. Yep. Um, and it's so true. Use their first names. Um, and don't be afraid to click on their profile and see like, what are they interested in? Have they responded? Do they, you know, I was looking at some response and moderation on a large brand um, and this person was just like pinging them and getting into their comments and, um, their profile picture was like, um, never good enough or something. And oh, I was like, well, geez. you're never going to make this person yeah. happy. So maybe the value of like what you respond to that person isn't to solve their problems. It's just to kind of quiet them enough in the background. So your real customers and the people you care about can make a difference. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes people don't 
necessarily, yeah, like you said, need their problem solved, but they just want to be heard or listened to. And if you give them that, their emotional response to you is a little bit better, and that might lead to something down the road or maybe a referral or something like that too. But I think um, the coolest thing I've seen with a lot of the moderation is when it goes offline, not just like when you're trying to get them to call you or something like that. I'm just thinking of a client. We use a lot of uh, recruiting, like for Facebook, and they'll have – you know, people coming into orientation, they've, they've accepted a position and they'll reference back, you know, Hey, I saw, you know, how you dealt with this online or just your community, that, that environment, that communication is, is really cool. And that's something that brought me in like that, that just happened, um, in our last, uh, recap last month. And it was just like, that's so awesome. Like she was happy with it. Um, but also that's why we do what we do. Right. Right. <laughs> and I think that that is such a difference because it literally is a transparent customer service, yeah. right? Like, and when you do it well, you basically get so far ahead of all your competitors. And we see this in industries. Again, this is a perfect example of when industries um, think that their their people are not on social media, or like if they're B two B manufacturing or something where people are like, oh, my people are not, my audience isn't on social media. Um, but then you see their competitors doing it, and it's in a way that's so transparent with customer service, with recruitment, with sales. Um, I think it just is, it can transform the way that prospects look at your business because at least you care. Yeah, for sure. I think, like you said too, like just when you're, if you're using it for recruiting or customer service, like getting those other departments involved with that, maybe they're not actually getting online and, and re- replying to it. But, you know, when you get a comment going to that department saying, hey, how would you like to answer this? And that just sort of builds that, the whole um, team in that moderation. I think another thing with the moderation too is just the data you can collect from it. Like individual responses are important themselves, but you can see a trend over time. Like are most of our responses positive? Are they negative? Are they surrounding this? Like you can kind of get some feedback into your business. Like, Hey, we're missing this consistently. Let's build that up. Yeah. I, that is one of my favorite things right now about social is it's that long term of that. I was looking at this for one of our clients and there's different tagging features that you can use, um, that we use obviously, but, um, I was looking at a longer period of time and they have lots of different pages, lots of things going on for this business, but you were able to see how many like inquiries, like literal sales inquiries in a very service driven business that they have. And it was just because when we were responding back on behalf of the brand, we just tagged it like inquiry, Mm -hmm. business opportunity. And to see that accumulate over time, that question of what am I getting out of my social media, that it's not even a thing because you look at all of these direct sales conversations and you don't have to have a fancy software to do that. You can count them or you can, Mm -hmm. you know, just make a note of them. Um, but I think that's one of the biggest game changers in social ROI right now is the, just the customer service element of it. For sure. Yeah. Let's talk about negative reviews because I feel like that's something that's one of the biggest fears of businesses. Um, let's talk about what you're seeing. I mean, you're working with clients every Mm -hmm. single day, businesses every single day in terms of where are they coming? Like, where are the platforms that people are venting their lives on? <laughs> and is it just the is it just the trolls, or is it legit so people? Uh, gosh, maybe half and half. I think I'm thinking specifically like a you know in the healthcare field. It seems like a lot of the reviews are on like Google, and some of them are just way off base. Maybe they didn't understand like where they were going to like an urgent care versus a doctor's office versus a hospital. And so again, those negative reviews, they come in and you might panic like, Oh my gosh, we have a two or three star rating. But when you actually dig into them, it's like, well, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That, that lady should have gone to a, an ER and she went to a doctor's office, like just stuff like that. Um, that's more healthcare, I guess, but probably across the board more so with Facebook, just cause it's kind of built in. You can comment, you can leave a review. Um, it just, it's shareable. I feel like it can, Sometimes people, when they leave a negative review, they want people to see it and they want to just, you know, put people on blast. And sometimes those are the trolls, like you said. Um, But if it's actually a negative review that they want some sort of resolution, um, again, still on Facebook, but probably more in the review section or even a, a direct message. Like if it's actually like, hey, I had a problem with your business, I think the 
people who actually want help send a message asking for help. Yeah. And I think I always tell people put the same amount of effort into the response as the user put into the comment or the mm -hmm. review. Um, because if it was just somebody, you know, venting, then give them a second and, you know, let them know that you're working on it or tell them to give you a call or give them a something that they can solve their problem. But if they're legit having issues, mm -hmm. solving it in real time, like could have the review go away. Yeah. I and mean, we see that all the time. Some people will put a negative review. We respond back to them. We solve the problem, whatever the problem was, and then they remove the review. Yeah. So you it's not a, the person, like the person that left it um, removes the review. Um, I also think that um, the positive reviews it's one of the biggest mistakes that we see. Don't you agree? That like, like not you, replying to not him. replying yeah. to him yeah, yeah, because yeah. I just feel like you have somebody who just poured their heart out on your page, and not so much for the clients that we're working with, but just for businesses across the board. Somebody told you the story of how you saved their life. I mean, some of these mm -hmm. medical places have awesome, amazing reviews, and it's radio silent from the brand, and that like breaks my heart right. because it's like it's such a snub to that person. Even just a like on the post. I mean, that's minimal, but letting them know that you saw that and appreciate what they took time out of their day to tell you and do, um, I think that that's like social media 101. And if you're not doing that, you are missing not only a big opportunity to just show some some love, but to tell other people that thank you. Right. Like, you know, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. You could even take that a step further. Like I've seen, it's not a client of ours, but I think maybe Wendy's or something like that. Somebody left like, an insane review. It was kind of cheeky. It was funny, but it was a positive review. I think they gave him like nuggets for a year or something like that. Something silly, but it's just, you've taken maybe a positive review and turned that person into an evangelist. And then that itself is shareable. So I think in your own business, maybe you can't give something physical away like that, but how could you reach out to that person and say, thank you for you know your appreciation and we want to do something special for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be, could be big, could be small, but it's something that, again, just takes that experience to the next level. No, that's, again, another big opportunity there. Um, I think that that it, um, kind of answers a lot of the questions that businesses have around how to review, what to say, when to say it, right? So if we kind of summarize our conversation, being quick, even if it's just a um, response, letting them know you're trying to get to the bottom of it, um, be real and authentic, use their first name, give them your first name. Um, that makes a big difference. P responding to both negative and good reviews in a appropriate manner. Um, and then I think the other thing, and you touched on this, but um, you're going to get them. You're going to get negative yeah, reviews. The best businesses, 4.7 is the best rating because people expect you to mess up. Yeah. So don't be fascinated or like completely obsessed with your negative reviews. Just deal with them as, as they come in and don't forget about them. Like have a place that you have all those reviews coming um, because I think they are going to even be more critical to your business going forward than they are today. One thing we didn't mention with that um, – I know on Facebook with the reviews, say it is somebody who is just trolling or just, you know, they're not really being reasonable. After their first review and then your reply, you can hide the rest of the interaction if they're just being, you know, ridiculous. And comments too. If it's not in the review section, it's just a comment, you can, you know, hide those on the back end. They won't necessarily know about it. It'll still look live to them and to their friends, but on your page, you can clean it up. Again, if it's something that was negative and you spun it into a positive because you responded properly, you probably want to leave that up there. But if it's, again, just ridiculous and they're just trying to trash your page, you can sort of hide those and get rid of those. Yeah, that's a good question because we had um, some some recent dialogue about this internally, um, hiding comments versus not hiding comments. Um, I am on a under the impression of a case-by-case -case basis because we have seen this in the past where you start hiding comments and people blast you for hiding the comments <laughs> right. and then it looks like censorship, right? So you don't want it to look like you are perfect, but there may be a case where those hiding the comments is the right way to do it if they're not adding value. Like you said, the crazies out there, mm -hmm. we all know that people do that stuff and they just want to be ornery, right? Like right. it's just, that's, the, that's their 
goal in life. Um, but I do think from a PR perspective, and we've seen this happen, Applebee's had this a while back. Um, there were some big brands that have had pretty significant case studies. You, you have to be authentic. And the yeah. second you don't look authentic and you look like you're trying to do something shady, the whole PR perception of it is going to kind of bite you in the butt. So. Yeah, people figure that out. They figure it, it out real quick. <laughs> All right, well, let's go on to our next segment, which is really looking at the generations of social media using um, – the platforms. Most people have more than one platform on their devices. And so we're going to look at the usage of the apps and the screen time based on, we had a whole bunch of people send us screen captures and we're just going to give the profile of the individual. And should that individual be your demo? Um, these are some ways you could reach them. So who do we have here? Here I have no names, but 20 year old white female college student. Okay. So some demographic um, there. So this is I believe the last seven days, sort of an average, but top is Facebook. Next, not necessarily social media, but photos. I guess that's somewhat interesting, maybe sharing photos or, um, again, just that visual platform. Um, next would be YouTube, Instagram, and then there's a few more kind of trickling down. Pandora could be social media, but Snapchat, FaceTime. So kind of a lot there, kind of spread out across, but I think a really common main thread is just that, that visual aspect of it. Um, again, with Facebook, that kind of covers a lot of different age groups, a lot of reasons why she might be on there. Um, but again, with the YouTube, the Instagram, the Snapchat, that's sharing your photos with other people or maybe consuming other people's content as well. Yeah, I think, um, so perfect example of everybody says young people aren't on Facebook. I would right. consider a 20 year old a young yeah. person. Um, <laughs> I, <think laughs> I so. mean, I'm older than that, <laughs> but, um, that is the primary use of this individual was Facebook. And um, I think that it still is an amazing platform to reach. And the thing with Facebook is if you're trying to target, just use ads and just target it to people 17 to 20 in your demographic. And chances are you'll reach those people. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult of a strategy to try to implement. Um, I think the other thing that you were mentioning, it was very visual. Like we see the apps, you know, we're looking at a, a phone here, but you know, the photos, how important those are in Instagram and Facebook and, um, you know, what to, how to target somebody where photos and visuals are so important. And I think that is a, a great example of how to position your content strategy, right? If that's the type of person that you're looking to attract and you have, you know, somebody who likes beauty or consumer goods or shopping, those pictures are pretty. Like those brands are using very beautiful visuals right, right. so maybe you should up your visual content a little bit um could really help to distinguish between a you a local business and another local business um that you're trying to compete with in terms of attention yeah i think yeah stepping that game up that way but also going the other way is look at what are sort of the common threads along amongst like what they're looking at and then try to maybe disrupt that a little bit so if everything is pinks and pastels maybe like a shocker you know blue or orange or something like that just to jump out at them a little bit more too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because when you are trying to target people on social, you are not competing against your competitors. You're competing against everything else they're consuming. Mm -hmm. I think people forget about that. They forget that like your content piece is going to be between their, you know, large brand and their uncle's dinner picture, right? So you have to plan your content as if it was competing for someone's attention instead of competing against your competitors. Because chances are you're not going to be right next to your competitors um, in a, you know, one-to-one -one on someone's social right, feed. Right, right. Um, the other thing I think on this that was interesting is the YouTube. Mm -hmm. So um, YouTube comes up a lot in terms of people's actual usage. Um, and I think it's just such a different platform to use on a social media basis. Um, any thoughts on that? Like, where do you feel like it, YouTube's play is for business, local and larger? Yeah, I mean, it plugs in so many places. Like, yes, there's the YouTube platform, but so many people put their videos on YouTube and then put them on their website or share them elsewhere. And so I wonder, you know, exactly if that's in the app itself or on those other places. But I mean, 
you could you could link back and forth. I mean, you can obviously put ads on YouTube and put your own content there and try to draw people back to your website for that different experience. I think a lot of times, you know, you're looking at how can we get our content and make it fit into this box of this platform. But I think you need to think about how does that support what we're doing elsewhere. And again, not people aren't just on one platform. And so how could we reach this person in a way on Facebook that would either get them to YouTube or have YouTube support that experience on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, like just that cohesive experience. Yeah, I agreed. I think that's a, some good advice that um, I, people need to think of YouTube in different ways and they probably are just like, oh, I need to get my videos on YouTube. Like that's, yeah, mm, yeah. that works enough. But I think having some sort of a plan, like you said, whether it's in your website, it's, you know, it's, it's the place your videos live that support your other channels or maybe it's your how to's only your how to's live on YouTube. Everything else is on your social channels. If they want to go to longer form content, they can go to YouTube. Yeah. I mean, and it could support your business as well. If you get so many views, you could monetize, you could have other ads on your videos. If your content is good enough, that could be a source of revenue yeah. as well. Cool. I like it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I think we had some good conversation on moderation and how to handle your online communities and we'll check back with you next time. 